Hi folks, it's good to be with you and love to everybody out there. God bless you and uh, hope everybody's okay. Uh, love to everybody. Don't forget my website, jasonburnspreacher.com. Don't forget my Facebook. Don't forget my Twitter. On Facebook, there's a lot of Bible teaching. On Twitter, it's more apologetics. Then you've got my website, jasonburnspreacher.com. And then you've got um, Jason Burns books on uh, Amazon. So just type in various topics like Jason Burns Islam, Jason Burns Atheism, Jason Burns uh, Pastoral Care or something like that. And things will come up and you can look at um, the books. You can read them for free or you can, you can buy them. So it's good to be with you and uh, love to everybody out there. Um, this video is a resource video. It's basically giving you some resources on the debate between me, Mohammed Hijab, and and, uh, and and with Bob the Builder, Bob the Builder and me debating Mohammed Hijab. And also, um, at the end, I'll do a little bit about Shamsi as well. Um, so. <clears throat> I want to recommend some resources. Some of the things that I'm going to recommend to you, I don't necessarily agree with, but I'm recommending them for you to to get a, a wider scholarly understanding of the topics. Uh, just quickly, in the debate with Mohammed Hijab, I gave five arguments. You can get those five arguments that are used on Mohammed Hijab, which were very effective because he, he couldn't contravene them. You can get them from my booklet, The Canon of Scripture, uh, on Amazon. Now, I warn you, it's not easy reading. It's a short booklet, but it's only those, only people who are, who are open to scholarship. So, if you're going to buy it or read it, be warned, it's not easy reading. It's heavy reading. Okay, It's only short, but it's quite heavy. But well, the arguments I use on Muhammad Hijab are in that booklet, uh, the Canon of Scripture. So I'm going to recommend. Uh, so in in my argument to Muhammad Hijab, the two principal works that I used were this book, uh, the Heresy of Orthodoxy. I really, really recommend this. If anyone wants a, a it's a refutation of Bart Ehrman. And um, if anybody really wants to get a grip of the formation of the canon, how the New Testament was formed, this book by Andres J. Kostenberger, The Heresy of Orthodoxy, and Michael J. Kruger, is a really, really good book to read. It really, really is. Really recommend it. It's published by Apollos, uh, and that's the book. So when I was debating Muhammad Hijab, that is the book, that the scholarship from that book that I was mainly using on him. Okay, and the other book that I was in my in my debate with him, uh, another book that I used with evidence and information, is this book, the the Dead Sea Scrolls, by Carsten Peter Theed. Um, Published by Palgrave or for St. Martin's Press. St. Martin's Press. And uh, that's the title. Don't know if you can read it. But this if you remember in the debate with Muhammad Hijab I go into the Essenes and this book is a brilliant book on the Essene community uh, it tells you uh, Pliny and one or two ancient writers mentioning about this um, um, community these there was quite a few of these communities dotted about and they were copying scripture so there was already a culture of writing in the time of the Lord Jesus. So this is a this is a key book that I used in debating Muhammad Hijab, uh, the, the, the Sunday Gone. I used the scholarship from there. I'd read, I'd read this in depth. I'd made a lot of notes and done my own research. So I was on solid ground when I was debating Muhammad Hijab concerning that. So those are the two books that 
I recommend that you read that you'll be really edified by uh, these two uh, on the issue of canon uh, this is a very good book uh, the books and the parchments by FF Bruce the books and the parchments by FF Bruce this will give you a general overall understanding of the formation of the canon and how uh, the Bible developed in its copying and printing etc I don't agree with everything FF Bruce says but it's a helpful overview of uh, the canon the formation of the canon and the books and the parchments FF Bruce like I said I don't agree with everything FF Bruce ever said uh, it was not a fully an inerrantist but this is a very helpful book to get hold of um, so I don't know who publishes it now but uh, get hold of this book if you've got questions about how the Bible was put together etc the books and the parchments I highly recommend that as well I also highly recommend uh, this book it's a uh, revelation and inspiration by B.B. Warfield B.B. Warfield now in the debate uh, at the end of the debate uh, Bob and Mohammed Hijab talked about can we do without the New Testament and be saved there was a debate there well this would be a helpful uh, corrective in a way in that last bit to, to give more uh, more biblical answers to what Muhammad Hijab was saying uh, and uh, so revelation and inspiration uh, so this would correct Muhammad Hijab uh, in a very substantial way and we have the biblical idea of revelation the inspiration of the Bible the real problem of inspiration God inspired scripture it says scripture says the oracles of God inspiration is in criticism the divine origin of the Bible the canon of the New Testament so it's a quite a substantial uh, theological work it's an old work it's over a hundred years old or more uh, but it is a classic it's never been refuted and it, it's a really good work so that's revelation and inspiration by bb warfield this is the first volume of a 10 volume work but if anybody wants to talk about the inspiration of the bible the canon of scripture this is a must to read it's solid and it's really really helpful and it will ground you in solid uh, theology so i would recommend that book to you okay so that's uh, and this published by uh, Baker Bookhouses. Okay. So these are the main books that I would recommend you go and read concerning the debate that I had with Muhammad Hijab. This book, this book, B.B. Warfield, and. Kruger's Heresy of Orthodoxy. I would also recommend reading some of the commentaries by Simon Kistermaker or Keistermaker. So, published by Evangelical Press. Simon J. I don't know if it's Kistermaker or Keistermaker. But these commentaries by him and William Hendrickson. Um, I think I get William Hendrickson. Any any questions on um, the canon of Scripture? Any questions about New Testament uh, books? These are the books to get hold of. They're very edifying, very helpful. So this is by Evangelical Press. William Hendrickson is by um, The Banner of Truth. So get yourself a set of these if you're a serious Bible student from The Banner of Truth, William Hendrickson. And get yourself a set of uh, Simon J. Keistermaker's 
uh, commentaries as well and they go into details like who authored what or whatever I don't agree with everything they say like I don't agree with Keister Maker here on Hebrews but they're they're very generally they're very solid and very helpful pieces of writing on the New Testament and uh, so there they are so please get hold of them they will be a help to you and then um, I would also recommend we talked a lot about the early church fathers um, I'd encourage you to read primary source material Spend a little bit of time on, Christ, the, on the website Christian Writings and go and read some of the early church fathers' writings. Mohammed Hijab mentioned in the debate that he'd read Eusebius. So there's Eusebius. Have a read of it. It's really very interesting reading, very informative. So I'd recommend you to go and read that as part of a resource from that debate. Um that's his church history or ecclesiastical history I would also encourage you to read um, on on the early church fathers and the history of the church uh, the history of theology by William Cunningham volume 1 uh, the historical theology by William Cun Cun Cunningham volume 2 published by the banner of truth and I because I read a lot of churches, uh, early church fathers, the actual writings. So there's quite a quite a lot of times I don't agree with uh, <laughs> William Cunningham. But for someone who's just starting out in theology, you're just starting out in reading about these issues of church history, the formation of the canon, and all the rest of it. Uh, this work is a, a helpful work. It gives you a really good summary summary of the early church history and its development right up to the Middle Ages and to the Reformation. So I recommend, I highly recommend this for people who really want to start out understanding uh, about church history. Okay, so those are my recommendations. And uh, I got two more recommendations, um, but from a scholarly point of view, not from uh, an orthodox point of view, uh, these are William Cunningham is a solid Orthodox, okay. Eusebius is is solid. Uh, these guys are solid. BB Warfield solid. So you can read these and know that you're on solid ground. This guy uh, is all for Christianity, so he's not attacking Christianity. So he's solid. And F. F. Bruce is solid. So you can be on solid ground when you read these books they're not going to undermine your faith but these books that I'm going to recommend you uh, are books that are not solid and could undermine your faith if you're not strong in the faith the reason why I recommend these I think it's good to to read wide and to know what other people are saying as well so this guy John Barton uh, the spirit and the letter this is an academic work on the canon uh, it's published by SPCK it's a very important work because it, it, it covers a lot of academic issues concerning the formation of the canon. So I would encourage you, if you, if you want to uh, be a, a scholar uh, in, in the, on the issue of the formation of the canon, then this is a must to read because this will give you helpful pointers in the debates of formation of canon. So anybody at Theological Seminary or uh, anybody doing uh, work on this issue or want to debate on this issue th this would be a helpful resource to get hold of uh, the spirit and the letter John Barton he's not sound definitely not sound but it's a helpful academic resource then you have NT Wright so for me NT Wright's not sound I've made a video about that but this book, uh, The New Testament and the People of God, N.T. Wright, uh, from an academic point of view, there's a lot of resources in there where he he talks about early uh, Christian sources 
Um, and he has his own unique view of looking at the formation of the canon, looking at it more from um, a covenant perspective. Um, as I said, I don't agree with N.T. Wright. I, I don't think he's sound. I think uh, uh, he's not sound on the gospel. But uh, if anybody's going to do any real debating on the issue of the canon, you need to read N.T. Wright as well as people like Bart Ehrman, okay? So that's a book that you need to read concerning the formation of the canon. But if you do read N.T. Wright, read it with caution when it comes to his teaching on the doctrine of salvation. Because what he does on the doctrine of salvation, he reads the motif of Israel into the text so that it's not personal salvation, it's corporate salvation. Well, that's a that's a mistreatment of the doctrine of justification by faith. If you want to go into detail on that, go on uh, Desiring God Ministries and you can download a book on justification and N.T. Wright. And, and that goes into depth on, on N.T. Wright's understanding of justification. But this is a very helpful work for anybody interested in the canon, formation of the canon. This is a must. And then finally, I debated Shamsi and... Um, I debated him on the Quran and the interpretation of the Quran concerning um, concerning uh, did Zayed was Zayed the adopted son of Muhammad and then did Muhammad marry his adopted son's wife etc and in that debate uh, Shamsi kind of came at it with the idea that well Muhammad could not have done this because he would not teach paganism and so he was reading this as a hermeneutic into the study of the Quran. What I did, I used uh, the historical grammatical method and looked at the Quran in its context, textual context, and said, well, this is just ridiculous. It's in the text. Okay. So the reason why I did that is I was, I'm well aware of the Islamic way of doing hermeneutics, interpreting the Quran. But what I did, what I what I used is the Western historical grammatical method, and uh, that you can apply these methods to any ancient text. Um, so with that, uh, I'd encourage you to get hold of this book, "How to Read the Bible for All It's Worth," by Gordon Fee and Douglas Stewart. "How to Read the Bible for All It's Worth." Now I don't agree with everything in this book. I don't agree with um, there's a chapter on good Bible translations, and I don't agree with with that chapter because it 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 it, it does give you a helpful understanding of how translations work, but it is not for the King James version, and so I don't like it because of that. But it's this is a helpful book. To learn how to be an exegete, to learn how to expound the Bible. It goes into looking at genre, looking at how you read scripture, um, how you understand the prophets. It's a very good, popular, helpful book on hermeneutics, how to study the Bible. And uh, Gordon Fee is... Uh, Gordon Fee and Douglas Stewart are quite, quite outstanding scholars in their own way, and uh, so please, uh, if you want a popular book that you want to read this year that just is, is spiritual but practical, uh, get hold of this book on how to read the Bible for all it's worth, and it goes, it basically is the historical grammatical method of interpreting ancient texts that he's using. Uh, that they're using so please uh, it's by Zondran uh, Gordon D. Fee Douglas Stewart and that will that will help you like I said I don't agree with everything in the book but if you pray and be discerning you can get a lot out of this book and it would be really helpful uh, but don't take his advice on textual criticism go to the Dean Bergen on textual criticism and the King James go to the Dean Bergen Society or the Trinitarian Bible Society, or the Bible League Quarterly. The Bible League Quarterly, 
Trinitarian Bible Society or the Dean Bergen Society and they will provide you with resources on why the King James is a better translation than some of these modern ones. Uh, apart from that, this is very, very helpful. So that, that's all I have to say on this issue. I hope that's a blessing. These are resources for anybody serious. You can, if you don't want to read them, my little pamphlet on uh, the canon scripture, it's only a few pages, gives you some academic resources in a very, very simple way. It's quite heavy reading, but it's quicker than reading all this. But this stuff... It will build you up and inform you. And anybody who wants to be an apologist or a defender of the faith will certainly help you to, to do that. So I hope that's a help. All right, take care. God bless.